church, spend your money in another direction. This is an impossible case. When you come to something like that, bring that case to God this morning. I said, bring that case to God this morning. With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And you think about every area of your life, the challenges you face, and the things that kind of intimidate you in your life. And the things you say, Lord, just help me, help me to bear this. Because looks like there will never be a solution. This morning, a solution has come. Because of the wonder, the wonder, the wonder of God's unlimited power. Job chapter 5. In Job chapter 5, here we find the testimony of those who have followed through, examining, evaluating, finding out about the power of God. Job chapter 5 verse 8. I would seek unto God. Unto God will I commit my cause. Why will you take a decision like that? That you will look unto God. You will seek unto God. And unto God will you commit your cause. When you look around, and the men or the women that want to help, you discover vain is the help of man. They want to do their best. But their best produces a blanket that will not cover you, cover you in, the cold, in the cold night. They want to help. But their help is so limited. And they come to their very limit. And they come to you. And from the look on their face, you can tell what they want to say to you. They want to say... Honestly, sincerely, we have tried to help you in this matter. But this looks like it's beyond our training and experience and skill and ability and power. Then you seek unto the Lord. That's why here it says, I will seek unto God. And unto God will I commit my cause, which Doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, You don't have any reason to give up. You don't have any reason to be anxious. You don't have any reason to be fearful. Because this is the God that does great things and unsearchable. Immeasurable, marvelous things without number. It will convince you this morning. You know, sometimes you have those advertisements. It says, one trial will convince you. This morning, the Lord will convince you. When He removes that mountain out of your life, when He solves that problem in your life, and when He makes seemingly impossible things possible in your life, it will convince you that he does great mighty things, unsearchable, immeasurable. In Job chapter 9. Job chapter 9. I'm reading from verse, uh, reading from verse 4. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. He is wise in heart. And mighty in strength. You know, if somebody is wise, but he doesn't have power, yes, he'll go a little bit far, but not far enough. And if somebody is mighty and powerful, but he's not wise, he might do some things, but he'll not go as far as necessary. But when wisdom and power wisdom and might when they combine together that's awesome that's great that could be terrific and terrible he is wise in heart 
and mighty in strength, who has hardened himself against him and has prospered. What this scripture is saying is, while you are bringing your case to God, on the way, when you are coming, you just remember that so and so said on my dead body, for you to be able to have that breakthrough. And then your hands are down. And then the Lord reminds you, don't mind what he has said. He will never say anything more than what Pharaoh said. He will never be able to go as far as Nebuchadnezzar went. And those kings that hardened themselves against the program of God for his people, against the project of the Almighty for the seed of Abraham, all those people found that they could not harden themselves against the Almighty and still prosper. Therefore, keep on coming. Bring your case to the Lord. The Lord will solve the problem. All those people that threaten you, that accept you worship their idol, you worship their God, all those people that said, Fast all you can. Pray all you can. As long as we're here, you will never be able to make it. I want to announce to them and announce to you this morning, you have made it already. Because it says this almighty God you come to, awesome in power, great in power, he is wise in heart and mighty in strength who has hardened himself against him and has prospered in verse 10, which doeth great things past finding out. Which doeth great things past finding out, yea, and wonders without number. Wonders without number. You are entering into a new stage of wonder walking experience. Wonders. You go to the right, there will be wonders. You move to the left, there will be wonders. Wonders, wonders, wonders for the rest of your life. Because you have, because you serve a God, a God that will never, never fail. Psalm 77, verse 11. Psalm 77, verse 11. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely, I will remember thy wonders of old. What does that mean? I will remember they are what your wonders of old. What it means is this. Anytime I have a problem, I will go back to the record, the history of the people of God, and see the problems they had. And I will bring their problem that God solved by His wonder walking power. I will bring the mountain that God dissolved. By his omnipotence, I will bring the great problem that couldn't be solved, that the Almighty God solved for them. I'll put it on one scale of the balance. Then I will put my little problem that is causing me anxiety. I'll put it on the other scale of the balance. And then I will tell myself, as I remember, the wonders of God of old. See, he solved this great problem that is almost 100 times my own problem. My little problem then will fade into insignificance. Look at that verse 11 against Psalm 77. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. Verse 12, I will meditate also on all thy work and talk of thy doings. The more you talk about it, the more you are strengthened. 
The more you talk about it, the more you are empowered. The more you talk about it, the more you are energized. When you think about the miracles of God, when you think about the power of God, when you think about the marvelous things that He did, and then you say, Look at what God did. You pick up Abraham and see what God did for him at the age of 100. Sarah at the age of 90. And you see this impossible situation that the Almighty God solved. And then you meditate on what God did for Jacob, Jacob and Esau. And after 20 years, the hatred and the bitterness was still there. And then Jacob did everything he could do. And he sent people to Esau. And he came back and he said, We don't know how you will handle this. Because he's coming with 400 valiant men. And then he took himself unto God. He abandoned every other sin. And then he waited on the Lord. And then in just one night, the Lord solved such a great problem that had aroused the heart, the mind of Jacob. And so you meditate on the works and the wonders of God. God and you talk of his doings. Don't talk about your problem. Talk of his doing. When you talk about your problem, the problems increase in your mind. The problem is still the same size, but the more you talk about it, the more it increases. And the more you meditate on it, the more it will increase in your mind. But you talk about the doings of God, the deeds of God, the wonders of God, the power of God, the manifestation of the greatness of the Almighty God. I will remember the works of the Lord. I will remember. It's a determination. You know sometimes when problems come, those problems almost make you to forget every other thing. The goodness of God, the promises of God, the power, the might, the strength of God. But deliberately, you make up your mind and you recall the great things the Lord has done in Bible days and in contemporary times. And then you say, I'm going to meditate. You're not going to meditate on the problems, so meditate. On the things of God, on all thy work, and I talk, you talk, on thy doings, but searching thy way. O oh God is in the sanctuary, and who is so great a God as our God. It makes you to know how great God is when you meditate, when you think. When you turn it over in your mind, the greatness of God. Then in verse 14, thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. The Lord this morning will declare his might in your life in Jesus' name. Because we wonder, wonder. And the great manifestation of the power of the Almighty God. This is the weapon we need. This is the tool we need. This is what you need that will solve the problems you have. The power of God. Point number two. The weapon of God's unfailing power. As you look at the world in which we live. Almost everything has the tendency to fail. As you look at all the gadgets that human beings have, and the gadgets that human beings use, almost all things have an inbuilt weakness to fail. But there is one thing that never fails. 
from the day of creation until this time, thousands of years. There is something that never fails, and that is the power of God, the weapon of God's unfailing power. Adam and Eve found that to be true. The power did not fail. Abraham found that to be true. The power did not fail. Jacob found that to be true. The power never fails. Moses in the wilderness, Moses before Pharaoh, found that to be true. The power never, never, never fails. And Joshua in the land of Canaan, he found that to be true. The power never fails. And David on the battlefield was the Philistines. The power never fails. And then you come to the New Testament. And Jesus went out doing good. Because he was anointed of the Holy Ghost and power. And then God was with him, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. The power never failed. You find John and Peter, Peter and John. At the beautiful gate. And you saw that man that had been born paralyzed. The power never, never fails. Here comes Saul. Going from Jerusalem to Damascus. The power that blew him down. And the power that turned him around. That power never fails. Many things will fail in life. But we serve a God that has an unfailing power. And that power will work in our lives in Jesus' name. The weapon of God's unfailing power. We're looking at 2 Corinthians 